Welcome to a special edition of Coach's Corner. Today's Coach's Corner will focus on what are the defining attributes of effective professional development. As always, thanks for watching and please feel free to comment, like, share, and spread the love. Thanks for watching. What makes good PD, professional development? In my opinion, it's an open learning atmosphere uh, full of choice, uh, letting uh, learners cater the learning to their strengths. It's community, um, letting teachers work together with other teachers and being connected to more than just the people in the room. Freedom um, to do it your way and access, the access to the world of things that uh, we absolutely need and then to be trusted is really important. Hello, my name is Mr. D. I'm the EdTech Director and Technology and Learning Innovation Coach at the Amerasian School in Okinawa. Uh, for me, the defining attributes of effective professional development fall right in line with what Michael Fullan was writing about in his book, The Six Secrets of Change. Number one, have empathy with the people you work with. Number two, connect peers with purpose. Number three, capacity building prevails. Number four, learning is the work. Number five, transparency rules, and number six, systems learn. Thank you and sayonara. Carly Mora. I am a teacher on special assignment at Santeros Elementary School in Concord, California. And the defining attributes of effective professional development for me, both as a presenter and as a participant, is that the professional development always allows time for participants to collaborate with each other, to connect, to hopefully create something while that while they're there, and also that there's some sort of follow-up afterwards, some sort of support that's provided after the professional development is finished, either in person, going into the classroom, or through an email. What makes for good professional development? Is it having a plethora of devices? Is it passing out binders full of forms, worksheets, and things to read? Maybe it's a giant spreadsheet full of links and descriptions. Those are great tools, but good professional development is this. It's teachers getting together and talking about the challenges and obstacles they've overcome on their way to success. Talk to your teachers. Include them. Ask them to lead. That is good professional development. I'm Josh Harris. I'm an Educational Technology Specialist in Fairfield Sassoon Unified. And what I think is an aspect of effective PD has to do with teacher choice. I believe that offering teachers a choice and treating them like professionals from the outset sets a good tone um, to lower affective filters and help teachers really get into PD so that they can get the most out of it, so that they can receive the most benefit. My name 
name is Jessica Bieber. I am a kindergarten teacher in Iowa, and I would say the defining attributes of effective professional development would be that teachers are active learners throughout the PD and not just listening to a lecture, as well as allowing time for teachers to make it relevant to their room throughout the PD session. coordinator at MCOE and I think good professional development follows the exact same tenets of what a good uh, classroom instructional lesson sequence looks like. Um, you know the delivery needs to be engaging and relevant to the students. Uh, you need to provide time for them to practice and, and ask questions to the expert and I think most importantly you need to provide a time for follow-up so that the skills that you learn in the session can be uh, built upon in the future. My name is Stacy Brown, and I'm the leader of Mrs. B's Battalion, a first and second grade classroom in rural Iowa. When I think of professional development and the defining attributes that make it the most effective, one word comes to mind, differentiation. I've been teaching for about 15 years, but I'm still relatively new to all the educational learning that's taking place on Twitter. All the ed chats, the ed camps, all of the podcasts, they're all tailored exactly to meet my needs, and it's what I want to learn, two important aspects. We spend all this time differentiating all of our instruction to meet the needs of our students. So why doesn't it make sense to have professional development differentiated just for us? Hi, my name is Denise Green. I am a math coordinator administrator at the Monterey County Office of Education. And I think one aspect that makes a professional development really effective for me is that it's relevant. So I have a need or desire to attend this professional development to grow in this area. Um, I think the other piece is within that professional development, having time to really reflect and think about how my learnings are going to implement or be implemented and change my practice is essential. And the last piece occurs after the PD, and that's having follow-up and time to make sure that I am going through with some of the strategies or different learnings that I took away from the professional development. I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Before the first school bell rings, we are headed to our meetings, walking through the hallways looking for new pathways, inquiring about summer vacation, keeping all our attention on the PD. Admin chose for us. They should have asked me in, so the outcome wouldn't be the same. Next time we be more inclusive, empower teachers as an incentive. We can do it, show it, and we get. We are the ones who work with the kids. BDs, BDs, they must be so fun, so fun. So teachers can learn, learn a ton. BDs, BDs, they must be so fun, so fun. So teachers can learn, learn a ton. Let us organize our conferences. They have way more substances. Include the students in the mix. They should know the best of the six. It's not about the destination. We just have to get moving soon. BDs, BDs, they must be so fun, so fun. So teachers can learn, learn a ton. BDs, BDs, they must be so fun, so fun. So teachers can learn, learn a ton. We will be our very own team to create a plan 
learning dream, earning joys, given new voice, will be facilitated, not dictators, more student centered, less mission driven. Our choice for those to make or break, make us believe we can achieve. Pities, pities, they must be so fun, so fun, so teachers can learn. Learn a ton, learn a ton. Pities, they have to be fun. Teachers can learn a lot. That's what I'm talking about. Sylvia Duckworth's submission came in the form of a sketch note. Let's go ahead and take a look. 10 things teachers want for professional development. Number one, teachers want a voice and a choice in the PD offered. Number two, teachers want PD that is relevant for their students. Number three, teachers want PD that they can use right away. Number four, teachers want PD that is conducted by professionals with classroom experience. Number five, teachers want PD that is innovative and creative. Number six, teachers want PD that makes them better teachers. Number seven, teachers want PD that is practical, non-theoretical. Number eight, teachers want PD that allows them to collaborate and speak honestly. Number nine, Teachers want PD that will be relevant for a long time. And finally, number 10, teachers want admin to attend and participate in the PD sessions. Thanks a lot, Sylvia, for letting me use your graphic. So according to all of our wonderful respondents, professional development has several attributes that make it successful, including time, relevancy, collaboration, challenges, and of course, when it all comes down to it, it's all about those learners, the teachers, giving them choice, giving them voice, treating them like professionals, and building community. Thanks again to all those wonderful teachers, educators, and coaches that participated in this episode of Coach's Corner.